Good morning. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here at South Church in Granby, Connecticut. I'm Reverend Sandra Fisher, and along with my colleague, Reverend Denny Moon, and our Deacon of the Day, Jamie Scotto, we will be leading you in worship this morning. Our announcements in our common life. We are in need of more masks for our donation bin. Once it is replenished, they can be picked up in front of the church sanctuary in the bin. And if you would like to leave a donation, the proceeds go to the Waste Not, Want Not community meal. The meal is now serving over 300 meals on Wednesdays. There is curbside pickup in the parking lot behind South Church. Please uh, be appropriately masked when you arrive and people will serve you the meal uh, in a take-home container. Please check out the uh, South Church email blast for any Zoom meetings that we might be having. It's a way for us to stay connected. If you would like to receive those emails and have not, you can uh, join the email list by calling Linda in the church office at 860-653-7289. A link to the Kaleidoscope Corner message and the Coffee Hour Zoom chat are in the comments below. And our assistant moderator, Heather Sinan, has an announcement for us this morning. Heather. Good morning, I'm Heather Sinan, your assistant moderator, and I'm here to talk to you for a moment about the South Church Community Scholarship. I know this is a hard year for many of us to give money. At the same time, this feels like a really important year to continue our commitment to this scholarship. Our Community Scholarship is awarded each year to a graduating GMHS senior who resides outside of Granby, which makes them ineligible for most local scholarships. Year after year, I'm impressed by our outstanding young recipients and their commitment to ongoing education. This year, let's show that we remain committed to the good of the greater community and that faith really is hope enacted. Our past awards have been in the neighborhood of $2,000. Wouldn't it be great if we could award 2020 and do something good with that number? If you're able to contribute, please go to our website, southchurchgranby.org, where you can donate through text, breeze or mail in a check. Thank you. Thanks, Heather. I know that South Church will generously fund our scholarship again. Let's all be class of 2020 strong. And now, as is our tradition here at South Church, if you would all place your hand upon your heart and take three deep breaths together. Let us prepare to worship God. Would the children please come forward? 
When I was little, I felt really lucky because I had a very best friend. I was new to town. It was my first day of school and I walked into the classroom and my teacher led me over to the empty desk. She pulled out the chair and she said, you get to sit next to Carrie. I have a feeling you'll be really good friends. Well, it turns out that we were. Carrie lived in the neighborhood right across the street from me. And so we got to ride on the bus together every day. When I'd get on, I'd look for her and I'd go sit right next to her. And then we'd get off the bus and we'd walk side by side into school and we'd play and we'd learn. And then on the bus ride home, we'd make big plans for our evenings. And almost as soon as I was off the bus, I'd be on my bike, walking across the busy road and then riding through her neighborhood. We'd ride side by side around the neighborhood, singing songs, making up stories, trying to get away from the boys that lived in that neighborhood. If I was lucky, I'd get to make a phone call home to my mom and dad and ask if I could stay for dinner. Carrie's mom made this Polish dish that was stuffed cabbages. And even though it was not my favorite, I would stay for dinner just so I could sit next to Carrie and we could keep having fun. This went on for years. We continued to ride the bus together and walk across the street to each other's house. When we got old enough, we'd have sleepovers. She went to camp with me and I would go in the summertime. I'd ride in the back of her mom's station wagon to the next town over and we'd swim in her grandma's pool together. And we would dream of building a huge bridge from her house to my house that would cross the busy road in the shape of a rainbow so that we could run back and forth whenever we wanted to. The summer before sixth grade, I got some really bad news that Carrie's family would be moving to a different neighborhood. They'd still be in our town, but I just had a feeling that things would be different. We wouldn't be sitting next to each other on the bus. We wouldn't be walking into school together. Would we be playing as much as we did? Would she still be my friend because she didn't live right next to me? I just had this feeling that things would be different. Before Jesus dies, he tells his disciples a commandment. And that's something that he wants them to do. He says to love one another. And I think one of the best ways to love one another is to be a good friend. Carrie was a good friend to me. She never boasted or made me feel bad about myself. She didn't drag me down. She always just came alongside me and we lived life together. If I had a problem, she'd be right there to help me with it. If someone was, else was making me feel bad, she would stick up for me. And that summer before sixth grade, I worried that things would change and that maybe we wouldn't be as good of friends anymore. The first day of sixth grade came and I got on the bus. And of course I knew Carrie wasn't gonna be there. I scooted into a seat all by myself. I rode to school worried about the big walk into the middle school all by myself. But when I got off the bus, Carrie's bus had already gotten there and she was waiting for me outside and we got to walk side by side into middle school together. Carrie and I continued to be friends for a long time. In fact, we're even still friends today. We continue to support each other through good times and bad times, never boasting, making anybody else feel worse about themselves, just being side by side together in our friendship. I hope that you have a good friend like that and I hope that you can be a good friend like that. And if you don't, just keep your eyes open. A friend will show up. They're all around. God's love is all around us, looking for ways to show up in your life. And we just have to keep our eyes open for ways that we can love one another and be good friends to each other. See you soon. Good morning. My name is Jamie Scotto. I'm Deacon of the Day at South Church. Our scripture today is John chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. As we hear the words of scripture, let us listen for the words of God. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. 
And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal them to myself. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of the God shall stand forever. Now is our time to join together in prayer sharing our joys and concerns. Uh, for the life of Elliot Ginsberg, uh, and in support of the friends and family who are grieving his loss. Uh, gratitude for Doug and Linda Marshall, Chris Rising and John Stevenson, who are building picnic tables to place on the lawn at South Church. Sandy Flagg is uh, expressing her appreciation for the volunteers at the Garden of Gratitude. The Garden of Gratitude behind South Church grows fresh produce to support the Waste Not Want Not community meal. Sandy wants everyone to know how vital the garden is to the kitchen and volunteers, both as a source of fresh food and also as a place to renew one's soul. Uh, the Garden of Gratitude appreciates the donation that uh, turned up on the uh, property of a f um, table and chairs, and it's receiving a fresh coat of paint, and then we'll be out in the garden. Anyone can come and uh, enjoy uh, the beautiful nature around them, and I would uh, suggest a little weeding is always a good thing to do, too. And also, I would like to thank everyone for the expressions of congratulation on my Doctor of Ministry degree. There may have not been a lot of pomp, but there was circumstance around the pandemic. So thank you, everyone. It was a wonderful day with my family. And now, if you will join me in prayer, my friends. God of all time and space. You inhabited the relationship of love and generosity with all creation at a time before and beyond all knowing. Through the word and the spirit, you continue in eternal love for all beings. Fill us with a deep and abiding awareness of your presence, your call, and your grace in our lives and in our world. God, we turn and face you in the midst of the storm. Help us this hour to hear you speak to us in our heart of hearts, as that still small voice amidst the maelstrom, which gives us direction and peace and hope. Come, Holy Spirit, take and transform our societies, our world, that broken people find healing that lonely people find love, that bitter people find peace, and fearful people find hope. Come, Holy Spirit, take our world's leaders and governments and bring renewal, that communication may be opened, that the earth may be healed, that a hunger for justice addresses the hunger for food and safety felt by so many. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our lives with your presence so that more and more every day, all that we do and say and hope are an expression of love to others. And now let us pray the words that Jesus, the source of all love and hope, taught his disciples saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our music today is called Wagon Wheel Quilt. Laura Mazza Dixon played a traditional Scottish tune on the viola da gamba, and Maddie wrote a companion tune, quilting them together with piano and concertina played by their friend Linny Landgraft. These musical friends supported each other much as the tunes within the music support each other. for being with us here uh, at our Worship at South Church. I'd also like to thank uh, Stacy and John Kroninger, who uh, have used their techno nerdship to put this service together. Uh, we couldn't do this without you, so thank you so much. And, and thank you to Jamie Scotto for being the Deacon of the Day and reading our text from the Gospel of John. This passage from the Gospel of John is at the Last Supper. It's when uh, Jesus tells his disciples that he is leaving them and they begin to wonder where he is going and they begin to feel lost at the prospect of his departure. And Jesus says, uh, 
God will send you another advocate who will be with you forever. Jesus was the first advocate of theirs, and now another is being sent to them. The word in Greek for advocate is paraclete, para meaning alongside, as in paranormal, and cleat, which means called, so that the advocate is called to be alongside the disciples. Jesus equates this with the Holy Spirit uh, right after this, and this word, paraclete, Spirit, Holy Spirit, uh, can be translated as comforter or helper, friend, or in our translation here, advocate. This uh, Spirit Jesus also refers to as the Spirit of Truth. This can sound pretty woo-woo, you know, ghosts and spirits and all, kind of a stranger things feel to it can come. But I'm not a paranormal kind of a guy. Don't get me wrong, I think that John is speaking about something very real here, but it's not supernatural. It's more like a shift in consciousness, which leads to a different sense of who you are and how you relate to the world. The work of the Spirit is that shift, I think, from solo consciousness to an accompaniment consciousness. Such a shift in consciousness came to me Christmas morning, my junior year in high school. My Christmas consciousness before this had always been, like every other kid, the anticipation of what I was going to get under the tree on Christmas morning. But this year on Christmas Eve, my parents asked me to help them put my sister's gifts under the tree after my sisters, Linda and Lisa, who were seven years old and five years old at the time, after they went to bed. And so I did. And they told me what was in the packages for them. And I began to anticipate how good they would feel on Christmas morning. Don't get me wrong, I was very happy to get my gifts that year under the tree, but I was surprised at how I anticipated their glee each time they opened a gift. And they were indeed just filled with delight and my heart was warmed each time. Somehow, that Christmas morning, I became connected to them in a new way. They were no longer simply cute backup singers to my oh-so-important rock star teenage life, or so I thought. No longer were they little gremlins who took time away from girls and guitars and basketball when I had to babysit for them. They became actual little people with personality and verve. They weren't just little sisters, they were my little sisters. This was a new consciousness, a new spirit. We belonged to one another. My brother Dan, on the other hand, was still a pain in the butt. <laughs> but that says more about me and my own self-centered life at that time. He was only 18 months younger than I. And it was a few years later when we were in, colleges, in college until our consciousness shifted and our relationship did as well. This shift in consciousness, as I see it, is the work of the Holy Spirit. I didn't make it happen. It happened to me. But it wasn't supernatural. Rather, a combination of natural influences within me and outside of me. My favorite uh, translation of the word paraclete is friend. Because I think it speaks to where Jesus was teaching the disciples. 
friendship as mutual accompaniment. Jesus says to them, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And in the Gospel of John, there is only one commandment that Jesus gives. It's in the previous chapter. And he says to them, I give you a new commandment that you should love one another even as I love you. So should you love one another. He is calling them into friendship, you see. Mutual accompaniment. Being an an accompanist is different than simply playing an instrument. When Norman or Maddie accompany a soloist, they don't simply bang down on the keys and say, follow me. They provide a context, a setting, an environment in which the singer can lead and perform. They follow the singer's lead in interpreting the song. They come alongside them. If the singer falters or gets lost, they give them what they need, the right note, another introduction, an extra measure. The work of the Spirit is the work of friendship, a mutual accompaniment that allows everyone to shine in their own way. We heard this earlier in the musical piece that Maddie and Laura and her friends played. But the work of the Spirit is not always easy work. Sometimes an accompanist with the Spirit of Truth has to bang the keyboard in order to get you on the right note. At an earlier church at which I served, I was at a council meeting one evening and I spoke some harsh words to a person on the council who had criticized me. After the meeting, Another man followed me out to the car. He had been a longtime friend of mine. And he said to me, look, he said, that fellow was just trying to keep you out of potential trouble. And you put him down. This is on you, Denny. He loved me. I knew that. And so I knew he wasn't speaking from above. He was alongside me in this judgment. And so I had to take it seriously. And my consciousness shifted. I realized that criticism can be an expression of love. And at the next council meeting, I had to apologize to him. And beyond that, thank him for trying to help me and me being such a numbskull at not receiving his help. Sometimes the accompanist has to bang on the keyboard to get you on the right note. And then the work of the Spirit also has to do with those times when we struggle. Friends accompany one another with encouragement. Paraclete is translated sometimes as comforter. When we encounter people who are feeling down, often we we don't come alongside them, but we come from above them. We say things like, oh, it's not that bad, or other people have it worse, or cheer up, it's gonna get better. Sometimes we, we just walk away because we're too embarrassed by the negative feeling, or maybe we feel that their negative feeling will crack open our negative feeling. But a friend accompanies alongside a person. I was once at a conference of uh, ministers and ministers' spouses, and there was a, a panel discussion about the role of minister spouses in the life of a church. There were three people on the panel, two women and a man, The woman who spoke last was a young mother of three kids, age six and down. And she told us about how exhausting it was to be the mother of three kids, age six and under. 
And she said one of the most difficult times of the day was often in the evening when she put them to bed because her husband was in a meeting at church. And she would be so exhausted that sometimes she would fall asleep before he came home. She was also troubled by some members of her church who seemed to keep their eye on their six-year-old. And whenever he misbehaved in some way, shouted or ran around, spilled something, she noticed that they would roll their eyes and kind of talk out of the corner of their mouths to one another. As she was telling us this part, she began to cry a little bit. She said she took the problem to her husband and said to him, you need to talk to those people. That's not how they should be acting. And she began to cry a little more. And then her husband said to her, honey, I, I can't do that. I can't tell them that. They'll be all upset. And then she said she began to, to sob and that she had never felt so alone in her whole life. And she crossed over a line at that point and her crying became uncontrollable. She couldn't stop and, and her sobbing just stunned all of us who were sitting there, all 75 of us or so. And it seemed like forever that we were listening to her cry before an older man from the rear of the group got up and made his way up to the front and he knelt down beside her chair and he put his hand on the back of her chair and he said to her, we are so sorry. We are so sorry for you. What a horrible situation to be in. But we have been in a similar place. Often though we have shrunk from sharing it with others. So, so thank you for your tears. They, they are a blessing to us. We want you to know because you have shown us that it's all right to feel helpless. What we want you to know is that you are not alone. We're with you. She reached into her purse. She pulled out a Kleenex. She blew her nose. She stuffed it back into the purse. The man stood up and said to her, would you like to dance? Let's give those church members a reason to roll their eyes, he said with a smile. And she, raising her eyebrows a little and turning the corners of her mouth up into a half smile, she reached out and she took his hand and she stood up. And he turned to the audience and he said, Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Bobompi was a good friend of mine. People began to sing, never understood a single word he said, but I helped him drink his wine. And the man and the woman up front began to sway back and forth in this little dance. They added a little two-step to it. People out here started singing with harmonies, joy to the world. All you boys and girls, now they started clapping. Joy to the fishes in the deep blue sea. Joy to you and me. Some men were, did the bass. Bah, bah, if I was the king of the world, then they started dancing. What I do, boom, boom. And you know, ministers and ministers' wives sing well and they clap well together. But when they started dancing, it was the herky-jerkiest thing you've ever seen. Joy to the fishes in the deep blue sea. Joy to you and me. When they got to the end of the song, they all clapped together. Hugs all around. Five years later, I saw this woman's husband at another minister's conference. And I ask him if they, if he remembered the dance. And he said, anytime 
a person in our family is feeling helpless or alone or so sad they just can't keep from crying, someone starts singing, Jeremiah was a bullfrog. It's reached mythic proportions in our family, he said. The work of the Holy Spirit is to shift our consciousness to the awareness of how deeply we belong to one another. It might start with little sisters on a Christmas morning, but it keeps expanding until we realize that we are friend to every person on the planet, every daffodil in the garden, every bird you hear singing at dawn, every cold stream into which you dip your toe. This spirit is holy because its belonging does not depend on national loyalty, political party, racial identity, gender distinction, or class privilege. It depends only on that mystery I call love with a capital L, which brought all things into being and holds all things together, that presence that we name God. A new commandment I give you, Jesus says, which is as old as the hills, love one another, befriend one another. I'm sending you the Spirit as your accompanist. So sing your song. Joy to the fishes in the deep blue sea. Joy to you and me. Many years ago, I wrote the musical Abracadabra and alongside me were my wife Sally and Mickey Curry Huggard and Peter Jorgensen, then a student who we had met in New York. Peter cleaned up my lyrics. He arranged some of the tunes in the show, and he played the lead at the Iverton Theater production. Peter now lives in Vancouver, British Columbia, with his wife, Katie, and their son, Lucas. And he agreed to sing one of the songs from the show, which fits our theme today, Intertwine. It's written for a shepherd and a flock of sheep who have been bickering, but Peter has turned it into a personal song of friendship. Thank you, Peter. I am honored to call you my friend. forget how we all intertwine, how no matter the distance we somehow combine as dawn joins the night to the day, as waters tie ocean to bay. How our lives intersect Like a wind chime suspended Our voices connect When one moves to right or to wrong All others sway and string in song Remember the bond of a friendship Strengthens our lives in ways we can't explain. Remember as well that life would be hell without sharing our joys and our pains. Losses and gains. We forget, we're attached at the heart, and I can't always tell where I end or you start. When I look in your eyes, 
I can see clearly revealed our mystery. Remember the bond of our friendship strengthens my life in ways I cannot explain. Remember as well my life would be held without sharing your joys and your pains, losses and gains. If you have any questions about our ministry, please contact us online by Googling South Church Granby. If you wish to make a donation supporting the work of South Church, there will be a slide showing how after the service. Thank you for worshiping with us today. We hope you will be with us again. If you wish, please join me in the benediction. Go forth into the world and serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve God, rejoicing through the power of the Holy Spirit, the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.